What is a theorem and how it works by Life Math Money? Without getting into the details right away, you can think of a theorem as a global computer. It's a very simple computer. It has no parallel processing, no decimals, and it stores all of its data on the blockchain. Now the data is its transaction history, and a transaction on the Ethereum network can pertain to transferring ether from one account to another or deploying a smart contract or executing or calling a smart contract anyone can download the entire ethereum blockchain and serially run all the transactions from the beginning to the end and arrive at the exact same state of the network that is all the nodes can independently agree on which accounts have how much ether what smart contracts are stored in the database and what the values for the stored variables are if this stuff isn't making sense to you right now don't worry you will understand it by the end of the video ether is a currency of the network and is used to bid on something called gas but don't think too much about it now i'll be covering gas in the next video in this series the accounts model and the ethereum state machine Ethereum does not use the UTXO model that Bitcoin does. It uses something much simpler, the accounts and balances model, which is very much alike to what your bank uses. Don't try to relate Bitcoin's UTXO model with the accounts model that Ethereum uses. They're very different and they are designed to achieve very different purposes. And don't worry too much if you don't know what a state machine is. Think of it as a way to just represent the current data balances in the system. and i will be representing the state by images in this article that will be shown later for now think of ethereum as a computer that maintains two lists the first list contains the ether balances of all the accounts and the second list contains the data of the programs which are called smart contract so as you can see there are two lists the first list has the accounts and balances for all accounts and the second list has just the smart contracts with their account numbers and their code and data a smart contract can also have ether stored in it that is that the addresses for the smart contract account can appear in the first list so if you see the third smart contract that is the third address smart contract has 17 ether as its balance a smart contract account is called a contract account and the other accounts which are not smart contract accounts that is they are user accounts or owned by a human they are called externally owned accounts just to reiterate a bit more you can see there are six total accounts here and you can see what the ether balances of these accounts are when you look at the second list you see that accounts 3 and 5 are contract accounts they are owned by a smart contract this means that accounts 1 2 4 and 6 are externally owned accounts they are owned by a human or a user smart contracts have the same rights that accounts owned by humans do they are just operated using the code stored here that is they just execute code and they do what the code asks them to do they have the same power the same rights that human accounts have that externally owned accounts have one thing to note here is that smart contract accounts do not have a private key they run purely on the basis of their code so for example if the code says send 10 ether to account 2 then it'll send 10 ether to account 2 it has no private key it only has code and it does exactly what the code says If there is no code that says send ether to someone else then it will just keep taking ether but it won't send it to anyone in other words the ether will be wasted Let me give you an example of a transaction let's say account number 6 wants to send 10 ether to account number 1 so what would happen to the state image say account 6 wants to transfer 10 ether to account 1 if you can see the balance of account 6 has reduced by 10 and has it's increased by 10 for the first account if you go back you will find the balance was 82 here and 25 here and now after this transaction is processed the balance has decreased for account 
that is it's become 72 and it's increased for account 1 it's become 35. This is a gist of what the Ethereum state machine is and I will just point out that I made a couple of simplifications here. The first simplification that I made is that I said the account number is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The reality is that the account number is not a serial list like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It is the address of the account which is derived from its public key. The second simplification that I made is that I said that the balances are stored in Ether, but they are actually stored in Way, which is one quintillionth of Ether. So the decimal unit is 10 raised to 18. So one Ether would be one zero 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 many many zeros way. It, the number here would not be 35, it'll be 35 and it'll have 18 zeros after it. Ethereum transaction structure. An Ethereum transaction has this structure. The first field is called from, and here the address of the account making the transaction goes. So of course, in case of an externally owned account, the entire transaction will be digitally signed by the owner's private key. So only the owner of the account can send a valid transaction from that account. The next field is to, and this field accepts an account address. If you're sending Ether to someone else, this is the account where the Ether will go to. If you call a contract, you put the contract's address here. If you put zeros in this field, the Ether nodes will understand that you are trying to create a new contract and they haven't programmed to know that when the two address is 0000, that means that this is a transaction to deploy a new smart contract. Then we have the value field. This is the amount of Ether to be transferred. The next field is data or input. When you're creating a new smart contract, the code of the new contract will go here. And when you are just calling an existing smart contract, then this is where you put any input data that your contract might need. For those of you who know how to code, if the contract has multiple functions, here you will mention which function you are calling. The other fields are gas price and gas limit, and this will be discussed in the next video. There's also another field called nonce, which is just a serial number of how many transactions have come from this account. We won't be getting too much into nonce and why it's important. This will be covered later in the course. There are also fields called VRS, but we won't be getting into those. They pertain to digital signatures and they are out of the scope of a beginner friendly video. State updates or running the computer. Let's step through some example transactions to help you understand how Ethereum works. You will start by creating a wallet on your computer. In the first transaction, you will acquire some Ether. This can be a transfer from another account or you can get some Ether from mining a block and earning Ether as a block reward. Either way, the blockchain will now say that your account address that is represented by a public key now has X Ether balance. Think of the first list in the state images I showed you earlier. If you bought Ether from an exchange, the transaction will look like this, ignoring the gas price and the other fields I mentioned earlier. The from field will have the address of the exchange. The to field will have your address. This is where the Ether will be sent to. The value field will have the number of Ether to be sent, and this will be represented in way. And the data or input field will be blank. And if something was filled in the data or input field, it would just be ignored as the address here in the to field does not belong to a smart contract. In the second transaction, let's say that you create a smart contract. You wanted to get into a savings habit, so you decided to save some Ether from your income this month. You knew that if the money was accessible to you, you would end up spending it. So you want to create a smart contract that will lock up your Ether for one whole year. That is, you will send the Ether to that contract account and you will only be able to withdraw that Ether after one year. And for those of you who can code, the implementation of the smart contract written in Solidity is in the description. It's 
a link in the description. It has two variables. One will be to store the address of the creator of the contract. So this is where the ether will be sent after one year. And the other account is to store the contract creation date and time. And this will be used to measure if one year has passed or not. The values of the variable will show up along with the code in the state. So in the state here, so in the image here, a new contract will be created. It will have an account number. The code of the contract will be stored here in the state and the values of variables will be shown. And the values of the variable for this particular smart contract are the address of the person that created the contract, that is your address, and the date and time of the creation of this contract. The balance will show up here. That is this account will also show up in the first list. The account number will be shown here and the ether balance would be zero because you haven't transferred any ether to this account yet. The third transaction is pretty natural. You send ether to that smart contract account. It's pretty simple. You make a transaction. The from will be from your account address. Two will be the address of that smart contract. The value is the amount of ether you want to send represented in way and the data input will once again be blank. The state will update again and in the previous state image where I said the ether account will show here with the balance. The balance in your account will reduce and the balance in the contract account will increase. And the final fourth transaction would be withdrawing the ether from the smart contract. After one year, you will send another transaction that is calling the smart contract. The smart contract will then run its code and in this case it will check whether if a year has passed and if it has, it will transfer its entire balance to your account. This is what the transaction would look like. From will be your account address. The field to will have the account address of the smart contract. The value will be zero because you're not transferring ether to that address. And the data input will be the function of the smart contract you are calling. In this case, it would be the withdraw function. After this transaction has been included in the blockchain, the state will then update to reflect the new balances. The balance in your account would increase and the balance in the contracts account will go to zero. The contract code and data will exist in the blockchain even though you are done using it. It will live in the blockchain forever. There are some important notes that I want to point out to you. The first one is simple. The code of the contract will live forever in the blockchain. Even after you are done using it, the network does not care that you are done using it. For the network, this is just a part of the transaction history. It will stay on the blockchain forever. The second thing I want you to remember is that a smart contract will not run automatically. You have to send a transaction and call them. There is no way to schedule a smart contract to run at a particular date and time. In the example we discussed earlier, where the contract locks in ether for one whole year, and only after a year has passed, it successfully allows you to withdraw the ether back to your account. It's not possible for you to code the contract to send the ether back to you automatically at the end of the year. You have to make a transaction and call that contract and only after you call a contract, the code will run and the contract will send the ether back to you. You cannot schedule it to automatically do something. And finally, I want to note that failed transactions are recorded on the blockchain just like successful transactions are. So if you call your ether back after say six months, the smart contract will check whether one year has passed or not. And it will note that one year has not passed. So it will make the transaction fail. This failed transaction will still just be a part of the blockchain history. It will just be a part of the transaction history and will be recorded on the blockchain as a failed transaction. It will be saved forever. It won't be ignored or scrapped. If you found this video useful, please click the like and subscribe button. This video is a part of our Teach Yourself Crypto course.
it's a completely free course on bitcoin ethereum smart contracts decentralized finance and everything crypto go check it out have a good day and make sure you click like subscribe and hit the notification bell